This is a Nexapure salt system made by American SPS. It comes with, of course, the power center for the salt system. It comes with the cell. It also comes with a cleaning cap, the wires for hookup. It comes with the flow switch and the temp sensor. That also has to be plumbed in. They make three different cells, a gray, blue, and an orange cell, depending on your pool size. I'm going to go ahead and plumb the salt cell in and the manufacturer wants you to plumb it with a little valley or trap here in case you want to add the pH clear it's an optional product afterwards you want to plumb it kind of in the valley where the salt cell sits down plumb it also right above a uh, check valve which is another method to plumb it and I'm going to go ahead and use this configuration right here And if you're pretty handy, you can plumb this in yourself. You're going to need some pool tight glue. This is the glue that I use, and this is rated for pool plumbing. You'll need a ruler to measure it, a sharpie to mark the pipes, and something to cut the pipes with. I use a hacksaw. Plumbing at this particular pool is 2 inch plumbing. This particular pool already has a salt system and it was plumbed right here. So I'm going to actually plumb a valley here. So I'm going to actually take it off here. And over here before the spa, I'm going to bring the salt cell down right about here. And you can see the salt cell unit is pretty hefty itself. It's pretty large and I don't have a lot of area to work with here as far as the return area. Okay, you want to make sure you plumb the salt cell in the return of your heater. It's going to be after the heater. And this one had, of course, one already here, so this is where they plumbed it. Here's the pipe coming out of the heater. You'll see the arrow coming out of your heater in most cases, you know, that's the return line. Make sure the pool's off. You can also kill it with the breakers here, or if it has a kill switch, you can actually kill the equipment there. I'm going to cut these pipes off here and get started. Okay, so I cut that pipe off there. Since I don't want to replumb the whole uh, valve and this spa bypass. I'm going to go ahead and put a fitting extender on this pipe here like that. And this goes over the uh, two inch fitting. And I'm going to attach a pipe here and continue the plumbing. Okay, this one I'm going to leave a little bit of slack on here so I can actually put a regular fitting. I'm going to take it off here like this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the fitting extender here like that. I'm going to actually put this fitting to go down. And I'm going to take this fitting, this elbow here, <clears throat> I'm going to go this direction, keep it kind of straight, I'm going to build it this way, and out, and then I'm going to go down, and this one's going to connect to the salt cell when it gets down low enough. Plumb the flow switch and temp sensor before or after the cell, because I have an area right here that I'm going to be plumbing. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put the flow switch right here, right above the cell, and make sure the arrow is pointed in the right way for the flow when I install it. And so here's basically what I'm doing. I have the fitting extender elbow going down, another elbow. Here's where the salt cell will be. I'm going to bring it up here. I have the flow sensor and I have that pipe there. So it's kind of like building a puzzle, but I think I'm going to be able to have enough room to finish off the plumbing right there. I'm just cutting this two inch pipe into various sizes so I can fit it together. Okay, so I got another piece that I cut. I'm going to go ahead and put it there. The elbow going down. Again, nothing is glued yet. I'm just kind of putting it together to see how it's looking. See if I'm going to be able to get a good connection. Okay, and I had to recut this one because it was a little bit off. I'm going to try it one more time. I had to recut this one, and that looks more like it. I just need a small piece here to make this connection. Looks good. I just need a small piece here. It's about an inch or so, inch and a half into each pipe. The pipe will slide into. Let me get the measurement here. Four and a half inch piece here. So it's going to look something like this when I'm done. I'm coming out of the heater, it's going to go past the cell, through this check valve area, through this pipe, through the flow sensor, back down, then through the cell, and then back up and back to the return of the pool. And that's how the water is going to flow here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all this together. I have the valley that they suggest in case I do put the pH clear uh, part on the salt cell. I'm going to start over here and work my way this way. 
And then I'll get back over to this end here where the fitting extender is last. Yeah, it's a good idea to take a sharpie and mark the angle. That way when you go to put the glue on, you can line it back up. Right now it's straight when I glue it back together. You want to make sure all the pipes are dry and clean. Wipe them down with a rag. Make sure we have a clean fitting here. This glue dries pretty quick. You want to use a good amount inside each fitting. You want to put some around the pipe you're going to put the piece onto. We're going to slide it on there. I see my mark, even though it's going to be covered now, but I'm lining it up. You want to give it a little bit of a twist also when you glue with the pipes together. You want to push it until it stops. Okay, the next part is this fitting here. I'm going to put some glue on this part. Some glue inside the fitting itself. Then you want to make sure you get every area with glue. Stick this in here, give it a twist, push it in as far as it goes. Now I'm going to move the next one on. So next I'm going to get ready to plumb in the flow switch and temp sensor. You want to be very careful when you do this not to get any glue inside the sensor itself. It could damage the sensor, so be very careful with that. The flow sensor part, and here's the arrow, it tells me the direction of flow. I'm going to glue it right here, and this is the way the water is actually flowing. So it's coming out of the heater and flowing back to the pool, hence the arrow pointing towards the wall. And it's going to be flowing into the salt cell. You want to be very careful when you do this part of the plumbing. The flow switch and temp sensor is going to be a permanent part of the plumbing here. So you want to make sure that you put the right amount of glue in and you won't have to re-plumb this part of the salt system. And I went ahead and marked the fitting the Sharpie that way. Put it on at the right angle. You see I'm continuing to do the plumbing here. I'm matching up the pipe here with the little line I made with the Sharpie. And that's important to do. If you don't have the fittings lined up correctly, it'll make it difficult when you get to the end to attach the last piece of the fitting. You want to make sure all the angles are correct when you're doing this. Okay, now I'm ready to mount the salt cell itself. Not sure if it matters if this is in this direction of the flow. You can always reverse it when you take the cell off with the unions. But I'm going to mount it the way the instructions show. So I'm going to point it with this, the color part in front of where the water is flowing. You want to mount it as one piece and then there will be some slack. You can create some slack with the pipes to get the salt cell off. You want it in there pretty tight. You don't want this also to have any freedom inside the unions. I'm going to go ahead and glue this on here. You're ready to attach the salt cell to the fitting here. It's pretty heavy, so I went ahead and put some cardboard underneath it to hold it up and the pipe right there. And you can see I jammed some cardboard underneath there to kind of hold it up over this pipe here. And again, you want to be careful when you do this part. This is another permanent part of the plumbing. You want to make sure you do this correctly. It's going to be hard to redo this if you make a mistake. Okay, I'm just making sure I have the final measurements here because it's going to be kind of tight. I'm going to glue the fitting extender on. Make sure the area is clean. There we go. This pipe here, again, I marked it with the Sharpie to get the right angle. So when I glue it together, it's at the angle that I need it to be at center comes in handy. It'll save you from doing a lot of replumbing. I'm going to glue the other piece in. And almost finished with the plumbing right here at this point. The final piece of the puzzle, I'm going to glue this elbow in here and that should complete the insulation. The pipe should have a little bit of leeway and I can move them to get this last piece in. I should be able to get it in there. Maybe a little tight, but I think I can squeeze it in. I have the last fitting in there, and that completes that. So there wasn't a whole lot of room with this particular equipment setup. So again, you'll see how I plumbed it. It's coming from here out of the heater. We got the flow switch it's coming down. I have a little reservoir like they suggested. I can put the pH clear on later if I need to. It's going over here. It's going back up and back out the return line into the pool. And so there's one example of the plumbing on a Nexapier salt cell installation.
And of course, if you don't feel comfortable doing the plumbing yourself, you can have a professional install the salt cell for you.